So this video is going to uh, introduce how to operate your CubeSat Sim Lite, how to change modes, and how to decode and listen to the various um, signals from it. If you're using your CubeSat Sim Lite for the first time, I would suggest that you switch to the unboxing video. That will take you through all the steps. Uh, and if you have um, difficulty, then um, then try our troubleshooting video that shows some of the uh, some of the potential problems you could have and uh, and how to fix them. So this video is going to explain how to use the push buttons and to and to read the LEDs and to uh, get it to transmit in all, all five of its uh, of its different modes. So here is uh, my ground station, which is a Raspberry Pi 4B, and uh, right now I have a web SDR uh, software running. Um, and that is uh, basically the same as any software defined radio. Uh, it has this RTL SDR uh, dongle, uh, which is acting as the radio receiver. And this is our waterfall here showing, uh, showing the signal. I also have my, uh, my HT here so we can hear, hear the signals. So I'm gonna start by uh, putting power, plugging uh, the USB into my um, power plug there and, uh, and powering up the, uh, the CubeSat SIM. So uh, in a minute here, we will be, we'll be running. You can see the, the small LED on the, uh, on the Raspberry Pi 0W uh, turning on and blinking a little bit. That means the Raspberry Pi is booting up. And then after another minute, we'll see the green uh, LED on the board illuminate there. It just illuminated there indicating that the CubeSat SIM software is running. And then the blue uh, transmit LED will illuminate when it starts transmitting. Now, the first thing it's going to transmit, it's going to transmit in uh, a CW ID in Morse code. So it's going to transmit hi, hi, DE, and then uh, whatever call sign is Uh, whatever call sign is programmed and since we haven't configured this yet it just has the default call sign uh, which is just AMSAT and here you can see the signal on the waterfall right this first signal there is the CWID and now it is transmitting um, the uh, uh, FSK frequency shift keying telemetry and you can hear that hear that low rumbling sound uh, indicating that it is that it is um, transmitting and you see basically a, a continuous line there. All right, so we're going to use this push button here. There are two push buttons. This one here next to the, next to the blue LED on the left is uh, that one's only used to power it on. Um, you can normally power it on just by, just by unplugging and plugging the power. Um, but if you shut it down and, uh, and, and you don't wanna just uh, cycle the power, you can press and release that button and it will turn it on. This second switch uh, push button here next to the green LED, uh, this is the one that we use to change modes. We also use that one to reboot it and shut down. So uh, let's give it a try here. Let's put it up close so we can see it. Let's see if that'll focus. Okay, that's pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press and hold this push button. And, I, and once I do that, this green LED is going to start blinking. And it's going to blink in a sequence. It's going to blink one blink, and then two blinks, and then three blinks, and then four blinks, five blinks. And then it's going to blink three times slowly. And that's taking it through its whole sequence. And depending on when I release this button, uh, what the blink count is, that will determine the mode. So I'm going to start by putting it into mode five. Um, that way you can see nearly the whole sequence here. Uh, mode five is CW telemetry. So instead of this low rumbling sound, we'll hear, we'll hear CW um, numbers getting transmitted. So I'm going to press and hold this button, and then I'm going to count the blinks. And when it's blinking five times, I'm going to release it. Now you have to press pretty hard on this push button. Uh, and if you accidentally release it in the wrong point, then it'll be in the wrong mode. So let's see how we do here. All right, I'm gonna press it now. One, two, three, four, 
and five. And now I release it. And it is, it is going to um, stop transmitting. You see the, the signal stopped on the waterfall there. And then when it comes, comes back on, it's going to, uh, it's going to transmit uh, uh, high, high DE AMSAT, and then it's going to start uh, transmitting the, the telemetry. It takes about 30 seconds. So that was the uh, CWID. It always does the CWID when you change modes. Okay, so now you hear it's CW, it's transmitting a whole bunch of numbers. Um, this telemetry is actually in, in um, OSCAR 7, AO7 format. So if you copy down these numbers and then put them into a spreadsheet, it would actually decode the, um, the simulated telemetry that the CubeSat sim is generating. Okay, so I'm going to switch modes again. Uh, this time I'm going to switch to mode 1. Mode 1 is APRS. So I'm just going to press and hold the button, just, and then as it's blinking once, I'm going to quickly release it. So let me give that a try here. One, and then I release. Yeah, it takes about 30 seconds for it to, uh, to change modes. And then, uh, then we should hear, we'll hear the CWID, and then we'll hear the APRS uh, signal. Okay, and now we should hear the APRS. There we go. Now, I'm going to share my screen here so you can see the see the web SDR better. So I'm going to click here where it says CubeSat SIM, and that's going to turn on um, packet decoding or APRS decoding. Ah, and there we go. And now you see each time the packet comes, the uh, software is decoding it. So you see it's got the call sign, AMSAT, with the SSID of 11, and then uh, and then here is the packet, hi, hi, and then a whole series of numbers, which is the telemetry in, uh, in APRS format. Uh, the other cool thing about this web SDR known as OpenWebRx is that it, uh, if it gets coordinates, it can actually map it. So if I click here on the map, uh, it's going to open up and, uh, and it's going to plot it. And um, the uh, default location, if you don't configure anything, is uh, Washington, D.C., which is AMSAT's uh, headquarters. Now, if you, uh, if you look at the configuration video, you can see how to go in there and, uh, and, and change that and set your own coordinates or set the coordinates to, to anywhere you want uh, so that the uh, APRS will show uh, will show the CubeSat sim light to be in that location. Okay, so let's switch to a different mode again. Um, in fact, let's go back to let's go back to mode two, which is FSK. That's the default mode uh, that the CubeSat sim has when it uh, when it powers up. So let me switch to mode two here. I'm going to press press it, hold it, and release it when it blinks twice. One. One, two, now I release. And now I'm going to switch from the web SDR to, um, to Fox Telem. And we'll see if we can, uh, if we can decode some packets there. Okay, so that was the CWID, and now 
Uh, it's going to start transmitting frequency shift keying. And you see down the bottom here, this red line is the uh, spectrum. So you can see the peak here. It's just a little bit above 434.9. So it's offset by maybe one or two kilohertz. Uh, the eye diagram uh, is nice and open, and it shows uh, 9 dB of signal to noise ratio, which is very good. Um, and the, the waveform here looks like a nice square wave. That's a nice binary digital signal uh, there. Um, and if you look down the bottom here, this, this frames, that number is going to be increasing. It just went from 7 uh, until 8. Oops. Now it's up to 9. Okay, and if I click on the CubeSat Sim FSK tab here, because I'm doing frequency shift keying, uh, mode 2, you can see there is uh, telemetry here. For example, it's saying the battery voltage is 4.18 volts right now. Now, the CubeSat Sim Lite does not have a battery. This is actually simulated telemetry. And you can tell that if you go under computer software, it says simulated telemetry and it says on. So it is, uh, it's basically generating synthetic telemetry uh, as if it had a whole bunch of um, sensors, as if it had a battery, as if it had uh, solar panels. Now, in another video, I'll go through how to interpret all of these and to, and to see, see what's going on. But for this video here, we're going to, uh, we're just going to go through the different modes. So there's one other telemetry mode uh, known as BPSK, binary phase shift keying. And to do that, we're going to hit stop. And then yes, here. And then I'm going to switch to BPSK Fox Husky and say start. Okay, so now it's ready to decode that. It's not decoding because the CubeSat SIM is transmitting uh, FSK, right? Your transmitter and receiver have to be in the same mode. So BPSK is mode three. So I'm going to change it now and push and release on the third flash. One, two, three. Okay, so now uh, we should get uh, the um, BPSK binary phase shift keying signal. And when it locks in, the, the uh, um, phaser diagram will, will look like a straight line. The eye diagram will be open like it was before, and we should see a digital, digital signal here. And again, we'll start with the CWID. And now listen to the different sound that you get with BPSK. Instead of it being a rumble, it's kind of like a annoying, uh, uh, sort of a noise. Okay, this is just getting it started here. It's synchronizing. There it goes. Kind of an unpleasant sound, isn't it? But again, the phaser diagram, it's a straight line. The eye diagram is open and we have digital signals here. And if we look at this frame count, uh, we see that it's that it's increasing. Right? It's just went from 23 to 24. And now if I click on the BPSK tab here, we see that there's data here. Uh, and again, it shows simulated telemetry as uh, on. Okay, so we've done modes one, two, three, and five. So that leaves mode four. So switch to mode four, press and release. One, two blinks, three blinks, Four blinks. So four, mode four is slow scan TV or SSTV. So I'm going to switch to uh, QSSTV, which is a uh, Linux uh, SSTV decoding program. And we'll see if we can uh, if we can get an image. Now the CubeSat Sim Lite, it has two images programmed in it. Um, so that's what it will transmit. It will transmit initially uh, one image, and then it will repeat another image uh, over and over again. So let's see what we get. You should recognize the, the sound of slow scan TV. It's quite distinctive.
<laughs> there we go. So you see the image. Now you can also, for example, uh, you can also decode using um, uh, just using uh, other other apps too. For instance, here I can uh, try to use my uh, hold it up if I can here. So I'm running the uh, SSTV app on my iPhone. I don't talk here. Just with some acoustic coupling here, and then with this I have to adjust the phase. There we go, that's, that's not too bad. Uh, the format of this is Scotty 2. So that is our that is our first image. We got that nicely. And uh, now it's going to transmit the, uh, the second image. And you can see the, you can see the spectrum here. You see how this black background spectrum looks quite different from the white background there. So there you are. So this one is a picture of the, uh, of the CubeSat sim. Now you can plug a um, you can plug a Pi cam uh, a, a little Raspberry Pi camera into your um, Pi Zero, and if you if you buy one of those and connect it, then the uh, software will actually detect the camera and it will take a picture and transmit that image. So that's something you can do, uh, and I talk about that in our um, uh, in our uh, customization video. Okay, so those are the different modes. So let me show you. Um, one thing I haven't showed you is how to how to shut it down safely. Um, you shouldn't just disconnect the power from a Raspberry Pi because it can cause the the um, file system um, to get corrupted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press and hold the button here, and I'm going to go through the whole sequence. Except after five blinks, it's going to blink three times slowly, and if I release it, then it's going to just shut down the Pi, which takes about thirty seconds. So I'm going to um, stop sharing here. Get a better view of it here. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, and now three times slowly. So I can release it now. And you notice that the green light went out and the the Raspberry Pi uh, lamp there will, will blink. It takes it about 30 seconds for it to shut everything down. And now it's off. So now it is, uh, it's, now it's, uh, it's safe to, to unplug it. Um, we could also, if we wanted to, um, power it up now just by pushing and releasing this push button. So this is the one close to the, the blue LED. So let me do that. Press and release. And it should power up here. Unless I didn't push it. Let's try again. There we go. That worked. See the green LED on the high zero start to flash, and then it will go through go through its whole whole setup. So in this video, uh, we've shown you how to use the various buttons, right? We use this button here to power it on. We use this button here to change modes or to, uh, or to shut it down. So you see the green LED is illuminated. And then uh, we'll hear the CWID uh, when the blue transmit LED comes on. And it will, whatever mode it was in when you shut it down, um, that is the mode that it will start up in. So we have our CWID. And then since we were last doing um, SSTV, that's the mode that it will start up in.
Okay.